Well, we are close enough to one o'clock uh, Eastern time, and uh, we can probably go ahead and get going just in case some of this and the demonstration runs a bit long. Uh, again, I'm Brandon Litherland from NASA Langley in the Aeronautic Systems Analysis Branch. We're going to cover a bit uh, about a demonstration and a step-by-step -step on how to slice an imported mesh for fit model. And so one of the things that you might uh, wonder about, is, you know, why would you do this at all? Why would you go through this process of recutting a mesh when it's already there? You have the points and technically you can use fit model on any one of those. Yes, that's true. Um, but sometimes when you're bringing in an imported mesh from, say, CAD as an STL or from a, uh, a piece of, say, uh, CFD gridding software or a laser scan for that matter, the mesh uh, is likely to be unstructured. The points uh, very rarely lie on a 2D planar section. And so matching cross sections closely to this distribution uh, is difficult, but certainly not impossible because you are allowed to select, say, a region of points in fit model. But capturing the ones that you really care about in a small enough slice is kind of tricky. So it's, um, I'll go ahead and say that trying to perform fit model with lots and lots of distributed targets, it, it works very rarely, particularly if you have, say, dozens of parameters that you're trying to vary to make the fit work and hundreds and hundreds of targets. It's just, it's a lot for fit model to handle, even though technically it should solve. But there is a better way. So for this example, we're going to walk through the X57 common model fuselage that I performed a CFD mesh on to intentionally make it unstructured and then brought it back into VSP. And we'll give a bit of a demo here at the end as long as time permits. But uh, the idea here is that you import the mesh that you want into OpenVSP. And here you can see this unstructured mesh. And the idea is not to immediately convert it into a point cloud. We want to do some stuff with this first. And so the trick is to go to analysis and planar slice. And so you can choose your slices and bounds, uh, as you can see over here. You can choose automatic. And again, like Rob talked about the other day when uh, talking about planar slice and some of these other tools, it will automatically pick up on the tangencies at, say, the fore and aft end. You know, you can choose your normal axis and X, Y, and Z, the number of slices, and effectively just hit go. Now, you want to make sure that when you're dealing with a particular mesh, you have a set or that that mesh is the only thing shown. So if you have the mesh that you're wanting to slice and a VSP component or multiple meshes in there, it's going to slice all of them. So by all means, pay attention to uh, the isolated set that you want and then simply click start. And so what will happen is that that imported mesh gets sliced and it ends up with all of these nice regular sections as you move from fore to aft. And they each have their own color ID and they're each in their own location. And so the idea here is that you only want these slices. And the way that you can get that is to turn off the mesh radio button over here in the mesh geom. You'll go to the other tab and turn off mesh. And then you have to export this and bring it back in. And so that's just an extra step right now that kind of gets rid of that surface mesh and isolates it only to the slices that you want. We only want these slices to be used for our targets. So we, again, deactivate the mesh radio button and we want to only export shown. Now, what I discovered this morning and had to make a quick edit to the slides is that you apparently have to use this STL format. I did try it with Cart 3D and it exported the skin as well as the slices every time I tried this. I'm not quite sure why it did that, but uh, maybe it's a feature, maybe it's a bug, but STL does work. So the idea here is you export the STL, save it as whatever you want, and then as you bring this back, you just import that mesh, and now we can come over and convert it to a point cloud. Again, go to the other tab and click convert. You can see that all of these have the same ID, and it's still just the 2D slices. There is no outside mesh to this. And this is what results. So the points are only created on the outside of this mesh because that's where all of the points were. And now we have a nice ordered structure of two-dimensional cross sections going all the way the length of this fuselage, which is really handy. It's really easy to isolate these and grab them for fit model. And so you can see here that all this point cloud has all of the information uh, built in here. 
And with this, we can go ahead and isolate what we need for fit model. We can choose our cross sections. And this is a much easier application in trying to manipulate even by hand into the points that you're trying to fit. And so this is a bit of a, a short, you know, step-by-step -step process of the fit model where we identified one particular cross section, chose the 50% U cross section here. So it's zero one cross section two. And we set up fit model to attach only to that location and used all of these planar points right here. And because all of them were well-defined attached to this cross section, easy to, to attach, we just gave it all of the parameters that could define the shape and hit fit model. And sure enough, you get down to about 0 0.0001 distance metric because you know my, my tessellation in the W direction is pretty poor. So there are some gaps in here, of course but it comes up with the the shape that's intended very very easily and very well and so some tips and tricks here uh, that you can use for for guidance if you're trying to do this uh, and even trying to isolate a particular slice so if you're looking for a certain slice location as rob demonstrated last year you can set the number of slices to three which is the minimum and you can set the start and end equidistant from whatever location that you want so for example if you want to slice exactly at 9, start at 8, end at 10, and the middle section will be right at 9. But the nice thing is that the distance doesn't actually have to hit the model, so the first and the last slice can be completely off of whatever it is that you're slicing. So if you choose plus and minus 100, assuming your model's less than 100 units long, it will end up with one slice in that geometry right where you wanted it to. So you only have one to deal with. If you're trying to get, say, the uh, skinning, just right. And you can do this in either a uh, Y plane or a Z plane. Slice at Y equals zero and repeat the process. And that's going to give you a slice of points that go straight down the center of your body. And if you happen to know that, say, a uh, bulkhead or some section is at an odd angle within the geometry that's scanned or within the CAD, and you want to recapture that, you can rotate the mesh by that angle slice an X, Y, or Z, and then rotate the result back and everything will be oriented in the correct angle. So uh, we actually got through that in about eight minutes, which is kind of nice. Uh, so I can step through this in a demonstration to kind of show you what it looks like to go through this process. And I've got an example that helps us follow along with the uh, X57 fuselage. This is the geometry that we start with. So all I did was isolate the fuselage and run CFD mesh and get an unstructured triangulation of this surface. And so if we pop open a new model and we go to import, I'm gonna bring in an STL. And in this case, it's just the X57 fuselage mesh. Let's say, okay. And here we are. So again, that's that unstructured mesh that you saw. And just to show you why this is kind of a problem, let me come into the mesh geom, we'll go to other, and we'll convert this into a point cloud, and we're going to show only. This is what that point cloud looks like all by itself. And, you know, the outer mold line is, of course, well-defined, and there's points all over the place, and if you wanted to, yes, you can isolate these. So let's jump to, say, a left view, and let's go to our fit model. So all of these points are now available, and you can clearly see that there is one very clean 2D planar series of points here, but most of the rest have moved off. Um, so we can either select one or select multiple, or we can select a region. So if I wanted something up here, I could try and capture these points. Now you can see the problem already, that it's trying to catch near neighbors, it's trying to catch anything that we want to grab. But if we grab that, we think, okay, we've got all the points that we need. Let's turn that off so we can rotate. And what actually happened, is it grabbed a whole bunch of stuff here on the right hand side and it missed a bunch of the ones that were behind it here on or on the right it caught a bunch of stuff here on the left but it's difficult to grab the points that you really want you would have to rotate and grab rotate and grab rotate and grab it's tedious and trying to match a two-dimensional section to all of these and minimize the distance is going to be tricky um, so let's see what happens if we do this a different way let's delete these points and go back here 
And like I said in the demonstration, we go to planar slice, we'll give it, well, let's say somewhere in the neighborhood of 20 or so, we'll leave it automatic, and we'll start slicing. And now we have our slices, and it no-showed the original geometry. Here we've got our mesh and our slices. So if we turn mesh off, this is what we really want. And so now that that is shown, everything else is no-showed, we can come into File, Export, Shown Only, STL, just go with the default options here. And what that's going to do is we have our uh, meshes. Now, this could be, you know, any number. Let's do slice mesh and replace this file. Hit accept. Okay. And now we can no show this so we don't lose it. Go to import. Let's do an STL and slice mesh. So here are those points. Now, if we click on this, of course, we, the mesh itself is the surfaces. So if we shade this, that's what you can see. And what we want to do is convert that to a point cloud. So you click this button, and now we have our points along the outside of these slices. Again, let's go to show only, and that is what we want. This is a nice isolation of points into 2D sections that is very easy to use. So let's watch what happens here. I'm gonna go back to that left-handed view, and just for fun, I'm gonna go ahead and drop a stack into the model, and this is what we're gonna to use to play with. So I'm gonna to run to about, let's make it interesting. Let's come back here, try and match, say, this one. Bring it up in Z a little bit. All right, so that's a good place to start. Now, if I zoom in and I go back to fit model, I can go and select region and notice that it's got points selected, or at least it thinks it's done. We are going to select none, have select region, and we're gonna start highlighting these. And you can see that as I start to drag over and over again, it's adding more points to the number selected until you kind of know that you've captured them all. Now, if I look around, it's like, yep, caught everything that I wanted. And here's a little insight into fit model. You have to pre-select the geometry and the location before you hit add. So we want to fix this, in this case, to the 0.5 U location on the stack. We have our points selected, and now we'll hit add target. And all of them are free to go about W, so they're going to attach to the closest W position that they can on the surface, but they will go straight to U equals 0.5 at this cross section. Awesome. We've got our target selected. Let's go to pick variables, and we're going to go in the cross section tab, and again, come to cross section two. Now, do not start adding variables until you know what type of cross section type you want. In this case, we're going to give it a general fuse, because if you change the cross section type, it's going to change the IDs of these parameters, and it's going to erase everything in the, the variable tree. But let's say we want to give it some delta x, y, z. We want to give it height and width to play with, maximum width location, leave the angles alone, but give it strengths to play with. All right, so we gave it plenty, but we have fewer degrees of freedom and then the conditions. It's a well-posed problem. Now let's click fit. And well-posed problem, no problems whatsoever, snapped right to it. And we have a nice cross-section. So now if I press R and pick something to rotate around to have a better view, let me get rid of these so that we have a better view of this model. And you can see that this cross-section, near as makes no difference, lies right on top of that point cloud. And that is a much, much more reliable, much faster, easier way of getting to these cross sections and getting your model to line up with the, the imported meshes. So it's, uh, it's, it's, it's a very powerful thing to do. And since we went ahead and did cross sections in the X direction, let's take a look at what would happen if we, say for example, wanted to play around with the skinning. So I'm going to no-show this just so we can see what's going on. I'm going to hide this and go back to our original mesh. Rather than slicing an X this time, we are going to planar slice in Y, turn this off, and let's go from, say, minus 10 to 10 so that we only end up with one slice right down the middle. And we can do three. And now 
slice. So there it is. If we come in here and turn off mesh, that's just what we wanted. A nice two-dimensional slice right down the middle of that fuselage. And we go through the same process. So we're going to export an STL of the shown components. And really, it's just this y equals zero slice. So we're going to no show, and we're going to come back to import, bring that STL in, and here we go. So we have this, here's our Y0 slice, we convert to a point cloud, show only. So again, here is our nice clean set of points, easy to follow, easy to fit model. And when you have multiple sections already defined, and let's say that you've matched the dimensions of uh, you know, each of the individual cross sections that you wanted to use, say five or six probably at most, now you can go in and start giving it skinning parameters to play with. And you can, again, select a region ahead of and after the cross-sections and do these one at a time until you have almost perfectly matched the original intent of that geometry. Now, I can come in and what should happen if I open this. Here we go. So this is the result of following that skinning operation. So I took a stack, I matched a few cross-sections, and I matched the skinning using this procedure. And so what I want to do is instead of import, I want to insert that fuselage geometry and take a look at how well we did. Now, part of this is that this is still in inches. So we're just going to do one twelfth to bring that down to feet. And here we are. So if we select all and shade, take our fuselage and change that to a nice transparent material, let's say medium glass. We look at it from the left, zoom in. The skinning matches exceptionally well. The cross sections are all defined very nicely. Everything is lining up and we have effectively recreated this cross section. Now, something you'll notice is that the slough along in between these cross sections is very wavy. So if I come back to my stack geom here and go to a hidden view instead, you can see that it's kind of lofting that max W location around and it's pulling and pushing and moving this uh, this um, it's moving this feature line away from where it would have been on the normal fuselage that's going to be a byproduct of this process you don't know where that should have been in the beginning especially if you're coming in from something like cat so you do the best you can and then down the road if you need to tweak this a little bit to where you know better than what fit model did by all means go in and change some stuff manually that's fine and you can clean it up and uh, and make it, you know, as nice as you care to do it. So that uh, is a demonstration of a few ways that you can use uh, planar slice and meshes and uh, and fit model to try and recreate some of these geometries very very effectively in a very short time. Um, we're about ten minutes ahead still, even with the demonstration. So um, I see. Rob is uh, answering some questions here. Uh, did, was there anything popped up that I needed to demo or uh, how are we doing, Rob? Sorry, I had myself muted. There's There's been some longer term demos that we might get to, but I thought I might just for fun give another example of what you just demonstrated. Um, let me see. I can see if I can pull something up here. Yeah, let me um, go ahead and unshare my screen and minimize everything, and I'll bring you over, and uh, you're welcome to share your screen when you're ready, Rob. All right. And we can see VSP, so you're ready to go. So this is pretty impromptu, so apologies if I get it wrong, but <clears throat> the, the original version of what... Um, of what Brandon is talking about was when I actually made the original... Uh, Technum fuselage that is now part of the X57 model. And what we actually started with was nowhere near as nice as what Brandon was just looking at. This is the original STL file that we got from Technum uh, as the company. And so you can see we've got really, you know, nasty stuff all over the place, um, you know, nasty places in triangles. But if you'll notice carefully, notice it's not even well connected. Um, notice that we have here 
if I change it back to wireframe, we actually have places where this sort of aft fuselage cone overlaps this next part because they were two separate parts in CAD and they're both closed and they overlap and none of these triangles match up. Um, and these this bulkhead is then at an angle. And, you know, we were sent this, glad to have it, very thankful to have it, but it was a mess. You can imagine uh, trying to deal with this where if you wanted to come in and try and fit one of these cross sections back here in the middle, there's absolutely no points back here to deal with. Meanwhile, yeah, there's a lot of points for this main bulkhead here and a good amount up towards the front, but you can see that it's pretty chaotic where there's resolution and where there isn't. And so if you did the direct naive uh, convert to convert to points and look at it, you can see we've really got back here an odd assortment of points where um, it's just really unreliable if you want to come in and do a fit model. And then in particular, you've got spots here where we actually have, you know, in the sort of normal to the surface of the aircraft, we have sort of different views on what that point should be. So we really have a giant mess. Um, as, a, as a final example of that, if, if we view from the front, you know, okay, we might be able to extract that center line, but even extracting that center line, it's still a big mess. And let's go ahead and just do that because I think it is instructive. So if we do a fit model um, and we come in and we look at this and we just try and do by selecting a region where, you know, we grab that and we grab it again, um, as, as Brandon said, we're adding to this. And, and the reason it has to happen this way is because the way OpenGL can do selection is based on coloring points. And so we can only select sort of the one in front. We can't really select all the way through in Z. So we can only select the one in front. And when we do this a few times, we're up to the 300 points now. We're hopefully, I'm not selecting the same region every time. So we're, we're only adding one at a time there. So I'm gonna do um, to hide all the unselected points and go back to being able to rotate in 3D. And you'll see I have now just pretty much just points along that side, but if I view left and do a full, you'll see that I'm, it's really sparse. I have this huge region back here uh, of long regions on the fuselage where I have no information about what's happening along that part of the belly. Um, and there's really very sparse information. And then I have this extra information that is because one of the CAD parts went inside the body and provided information that was not really just on the OML of the aircraft. And so while we were thrilled to have all this, like I said, it was kind of a hot mess um, of information, but we were able to, what I did was exactly uh, what Brandon was just describing, was to come in and do something like, um, you know, do a y-axis slice, start, come in, uh, do that only. Oh, it turns out this is in different coordinates. So, oh, I didn't, I didn't change it to only three, did I? Um, let me come back, change that down to okay, just three, and do it. We got to show our mess too. Oh. Yeah, there you go. There we got go. It. And so now, if I come in. You'll see, and I can make that hidden, it'll help a little, um, that now I've really done a lot towards extracting it. Now, in this case, because it was so many separate parts, and you'll see there were even there were even some gaps in here that we still had parts that were not, um, and we had some, you know, some gaps up here in the front because these were not fully watertight components you'll see that it's still not amazing. It's not as pretty as the case that Brandon was showing, but it's a big improvement towards extracting those points and just sort of decluttering your life, right? You can, instead of having to fight to select points along the center line, you can much more quickly uh, de-res that model down and get it just to where you need it. So, you know, Brandon's example is great. I use this trick all the time, but oftentimes in the real world, 
you don't have something as nice as that mesh he started with. Uh, the other case, let me see if I can find it on my hard drive. Um, and who knows what I'll, what we'll find here, but I, I did, um, here we go. And I'm just going to, here we go. So here's the, the original D8 wind tunnel model or one of these fuse files. And you'll notice it's 482 megabytes. Um, think about that as a file that you're going to import into VSP. And so we're not going to do that, but first we'll choose the smaller one, which is only a 98 megabytes. Let me copy this to my desktop and see if we can load it. Um, so this is the other kind of thing that will happen commonly if you're doing fit model is somebody will send you their um, structured or unstructured CFD mesh, which they've run an obvious Stokes calculation for. And so they will have, it's a very lovely mesh and everything you could want, but it's also, you know, 10 gazillion points. And in terms of fit model, it's just, what are you gonna do with this, right? There's just too much information uh, to deal with in a reasonable way. And so instead, you can just come in and do the same kind of trick where by doing planar slice, we'll do it in the x-axis. We'll say we want, you know, something like uh, 11 slices. We'll do auto bounds and we'll start slicing. And as soon as we do that, it takes a little longer because this is a pretty fine mesh. Um, we can, and actually, you know what? This may not have worked because we're not watertight on that original geometry. Um, yeah, so that doesn't work because the original was not watertight. I had to, I had to do some hacking to turn off that watertightness check in order to get things to work. But that's that's not a made for mainstream thing. If if it's an important need, um, we can do that. I think actually the other file. I have was watertight, so maybe I did it that way. But you get the idea that oftentimes you'll have, you'll be given data, even if it's high quality data and not, you know, with gaps and holes and overlaps, it'll be more data than you need. And just, you know, enormous files of ridiculously high resolution. And this technique can provide a nice way of downsampling that works really well as well. Well, I appreciate the the extended demo there, Rob, because it, it hammers home the the point of why this is so useful and and why people should have this in their back pocket, um, particularly when you're trying to, you know, do what you can with oftentimes very generously provided uh, source data from either a manufacturer or a university or from elsewhere. And uh, like you said, we're really happy to have it, but there are things that you can do to make your life a lot uh, a lot easier.